Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Enhancement Shamans in Shadowlands. It is no secret that Enhancement Shamans have seen better days being one of the weaker melee for almost the entirety of BFA. Well, with Shadowlands just around the corner, is the future looking promising for Enhance? Well, we've hit up multi-gladiator and avid shaman content creator Tickle to share his thoughts, giving us an overview before then walking us through races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, and legendaries. Then, around the time Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, we'll release a refresher guide, which will make sure to cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage and perfect your playstyle before rounding off with a look at the best compositions. So, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified the moment these guides are released. Also, for more information on Tickle or to check out his YouTube, we'll leave those links in the description below. But to get things started, let's take a look at how Enhancement Shaman has changed going into Shadowlands, hopefully for the better. Well, Enhance has received a mini rework. Blizzard has reintroduced some old key abilities, including Flame Shock, Frost Shock, as well as Maelstrom weapon stacks instead of just a resource. These stacks are similar to how previous iterations of Enhance has played, reducing the cast speed and increasing the healing and damage of the buff spell by up to 100%, going up by 20% per stack, capping off at 10. Windfury Totem has also made a return, giving allies a 20% chance to proc another melee hit. This is particularly exciting for potential melee cleaves, think Turbo for instance. Now more than ever though, Enhance has truly taken the role of a melee ranged caster hybrid, having three melee abilities which are Storm Strike, Lava Lash, and Crash Lightning, and four ranged abilities, Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Frost Shock, and Flame Shock. There have also been very significant talent changes, and there are a lot of different options, which we'll get into a little later on in the video. So what does this mean for the playstyle of the spec as a whole? Well, Enhancement's main damage still focuses primarily on Storm Strike, combined with Ascendance and the PvP Talent Shamanism in order to deal insane bursts in small windows. This has only been improved upon with the addition of Covenant abilities and Legendary items, which further provide the instant burst damage that Enhancement is capable of. But for the most part, you can expect high burst damage, good team utility, but sadly very weak self-defensives. Alright, so overall, how is Enhancement shaping up? Well, first let's take a look at the good stuff. Shaman has fantastic utility. Wind Fury, a short interrupt, grounding, bloodlust for your team, great off heals, Earth Shield paired up with incredibly strong damage. There's a lot going for the spec there. But sadly, Enhancement's biggest drawback has always been their inability to survive in Arena. And this hasn't been approved upon with any buffs or nerfs directly, which leaves them basically at the state they were in in BFA. Nobody complained about Enhancement's damage. In fact, it was still good. The reason you didn't see any was that they simply are way too easy to kill, with only one defensive not usable inside of stuns and the need to be in melee range most of the time, it just makes Shaman susceptibly weak to almost all compositions. Although with that in mind, the potential to pick up Restoration Legendaries and Defensive Conduits later into the expansion means that Enhancement has the potential to improve slightly on their survivability at the cost of damage. But for now, we're not expecting Enhance to climb that much farther up our melee tier list. This leads us to believe Enhancement Shamans need some buffs defensively, ideally some additional defensive cooldown. For instance, Ferals got Barkskin, as well as keeping their survival instincts. Also, having your off healing dependent on Maelstrom weapon stacks means it's a very large trade-off to do so, which will cost you a lot of damage. Enhancement weapon imbues are also still incredibly lackluster and don't bring the feeling of the strong procs that we've seen in previous expansions. Primarily though, what every Enhanced Shaman wants is some form of a buff to their defensive capabilities. Alright, with that overview out of the way, let's now take a look at how to set up your own Enhancement Shaman ready for the new expansion, starting off with which race to pick. If you're on the Horde side, there is one clear winner, and that's of course still going to be Orc. The stun reduction from Hardiness paired up with the Racial Blood Fury for your burst windows is just unrivaled. If you're on the Alliance side, our recommended pick is going to be Dark Iron Dwarf. This is for the Racial Fireblood, giving you the ability to turn the tides, removing all bleeds and poisons or magical effects to gain a damage buff. Alternatively, if you're a little lazy and haven't unlocked Dark Iron Dwarfs, or just prefer the more defensive option, then Standard Dwarves offer the same racial, but instead of providing damage, it will reduce physical damage by 10%. The big drawback here is that it is only physical damage being reduced, so you're not going to get much value in some matchups. Anyway, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Alright, next up, let's go over each of your talents and discuss which your best ones are and why that's the case. 
Well, on the first row, the first pick is going to be Elemental Blast. This does some decent damage as well as providing you a boost to crit, haste, or mastery. Compared to the other options, this just provides the largest increase to your burst damage. Dropping down a row, the recommended pick is Storm Flurry. Storm Strike is going to be a large amount of your overall damage. With this talent potentially giving you multiple procs in conjunction, it will make it the preferred talent on this tier. On the level 30 row, the best pick is going to be Earth Shield. This is a great option for self-survivability and even for your teammates. Earth Shield does decent initial healing and also increases the healing you do to its target by 10%. Earth Shield is also quite strong with one specific legendary, which we'll touch on more later. On the next row, Elemental Assault is the clear pick. As mentioned, Storm Strike is the large chunk of your overall damage. This just simply buffs its damage further while also making Storm Strike a reliable way to build Maelstrom weapon stacks, which is a key part of your rotation going into Shadowlands. For the level 40 row, Nature's Guardian is the default pickup, helping to bolster your defensive survivability, as when dropping below 35%, you'll instantly heal for 20% of your maximum health every 45 seconds. This can be swapped, however, for the more mobility provided by Feral Lunge if you're facing a target with high mobility and can afford to lose the survivability. On our penultimate talent row, Sundering is the default pick. This still provides a large amount of damage and a small disrupt that is off diminishing returns. And of course, you can still combine your Sundering to secure a full capacitator totem, making it key to your burst rotation. Alternatively, on this row, the new addition of Stormkeeper can be considered against ranged compositions where maintaining uptime will be challenging. This provides you with a decent amount of burst at range. Dropping down to our final row, Ascendance is going to be the default pickup. Three minute cooldowns are often not the best in fast paced arena gameplay, but this talent has been reworked in Shadowlands. While still being on the GCD, it now immediately deals insane AoE damage when popped. This, along with Shamanism, can result in some ridiculous burst damage, not to mention making your hard hitting Storm Strike ranged and bypassing armor as it's replaced with Wind Strike. With your standard talents out of the way, let's take a look at what PvP talents you should pick up. First of all, Shamanism is a great talent. Whenever the enemy team is unable to reliably purge it, this simply gives yourself and an ally team member the Bloodlust or Heroism effect, increasing your haste by 20%. This can result in some ridiculous burst and is a great CD to use during setups. The only time you'll want to sacrifice this is when facing a mage, as they're able to spell steal the buff. Then, for your second PvP talent, you'll want Grounding Totem. This is a must-have unless the enemy team literally has no magic debuffs at all, and even then, you can still gain value from things like Covenant abilities or trinkets. This is just a great addition to your overall utility and something you'll rarely want to be without. For your third default pick, Swelling Waves is, again, great for when you're going to be focused. This works well with specific conduits increasing the healing of your healing surge. How this works is simply duplicating your surge, healing you for 50% of the healing 3 seconds later. You'll find yourself often using Maelstrom to heal yourself as a means to survive, and this will help aid with one of Shaman's biggest weaknesses. As for alternatives, Ethereal Form can be useful, especially in the current beta state, since there are tons of comps focusing solely around physical damage, things like Sub Rogues, Warriors, Windwalkers, and even Marksman Hunters. This makes the immunity incredibly strong, so consider swapping Ethereal Form for either Grounding or Swelling Waves. Alternatively, Thunder Charge can be a niche option to reduce the cooldown of your own and teammates' offensive or defensive cooldowns. This is particularly useful to throw off enemy CD trackers and can be great in certain compositions like Enhancement Rogue or Beast Cleat, giving you important CDs back a lot faster. This can be considered when you're able to drop either Grounding or Swelling Waves. Then the last option to consider is Ride the Lightning. This provides a large boost to your overall pad damage, especially if the enemy team has large amounts of pets like Death Knights, Warlocks, or Hunters. The drawback of this ability is that it can break CC and it's relatively useless during your burst window, but if you're simply looking to maximize consistent damage, then this is a good choice. Alright, so we've hit max level, we've got the right talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. Currently, we're recommending the Venthyr as the best overall covenant for enhancement shamans. The main reason for this is the Venthyr ability Chain Harvest. This works incredibly well, especially for enhancement shamans, as it scales with Maelstrom weapon stacks, doing a ton of damage offensively as well as healing. 
Picking up the Venthyr also gives you access to their Covenant ability, Door of Shadows, which gives you another Gap Closer, which can even be utilized on Z-Axis maps. This is great for a spec with such limited mobility. All right, now that we've sided with the Venthyr, it's time to choose a Soulbind. Soulbinds are essentially skill trees that you progress through as you journey through Shadowlands, providing mostly passive bonuses. There are three Soulbinds available to Venthyr. There's Theotar, the Mad Duke, Nagia, the Mistblade, and General Draven. Out of these three, the one that stands out for Enhancement Shamans is the latter, General Draven. The main reason for this is that, as we've mentioned a few times, Enhancement lacks when it comes to survivability. General Draven provides a large boost defensively, giving you access to Service in Stone and Enduring Gloom. Most importantly is the final ability, Service in Stone. This reduces the damage you take below 40% health by 10%. This combined with certain Legendaries and Conduits can bolster your defense by a ton. While other trees may offer more offensively, Enhancement is the main target in the majority of situations, making General Draven the clear pick. The recommended route to take in your Soulbind tree is going to be on screen now. You may notice that there are some gaps still missing. Well, these are filled with what's known as Conduits. And Conduits come in three different categories, Endurance, Potency, and Finesse. Depending on your Soulbind, you'll have a different combination of the three. Our selected route gives us access to one Endurance and two Potency and one Finesse. For our first slot, which is an Endurance Conduit, you're going to want to pick up Refreshing Waters. As mentioned, this works especially well with the Swelling Waves PvP talent and Maelstrom weapon, making your off-healing on yourself extremely potent. Next up, we have two Potency Conduits. For our first, we recommend Focus Lightning. This increases the damage or healing from your Maelstrom weapon stacks. This provides increased damage for Chain Harvest, Lightning Bolt, Elemental Blast, or even additional healing for Healing Surge. Overall, it's a very strong conduit. Then, while our next choice is a little odd, trust us, it's well worth it. We recommend picking up the Resto Potency Conduit Swirling Currents, as Enhanced now has Healing Stream Totem on a 30 second CD. This gets a ton of value with how often you're going to be looking to heal with Healing Surges, and remember, we've got Focus Lightning, Swelling Waves, and Refreshing Waters all also buffing our Healing Surges. So it's just a modifier on top of a modifier, making Healing Surge incredibly potent and making up for the lack of survivability. Then our last slot is going to be a Finesse Conduit. These focus more around mobility and utility, and our recommended choice for this is going to be Thunderous Paws. This increases your movement speed in Ghost Wolf by an additional 10% for the first three seconds. This simply provides some additional mobility to a spec which severely lacks it. This leaves our completed Soulbind tree looking like so. Alright then, last but not least, let's talk Legendaries. Legendaries are again back into the game. This time though, there is a new selection and they all work in Arena. Currently, you're only able to equip one at a time, but this may or may not change in the future. As a whole, the best offensive legendary hands down is going to be Legacy of the Frost Witch. What this does is, after spending Maelstrom weapon stacks, reset the cooldown of your Storm Strike as well as buffing its damage by 100%. This helps to smooth out the enhancement rotation and adds a nice chunk of extra burst, and makes your burst windows all that more potent. With that in mind though, and something we've mentioned a few times in this guide already, and that's that you can't really get away without extra survival ability on enhancement right now. And the best way to gain this is from the Restoration Shaman legendary Earth and Harmony. What this does is boost your Earth Shield heal by 300% when below 50% HP. This is an incredibly strong legendary in the state of the game right now with classes like Rogue, Hunter, and Windwalker all doing absurd amounts of damage. If you think you can get away without the added survivability from Earth and Harmony in your specific matchup, by all means go for the more offensive option in Legacy of the Frost Witch but it's recommended to have both and swap between. All right then everybody, that's going to conclude our first look at Enhancement Shamans in the up and coming expansion Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates on this information that you saw in this guide, plus a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even which comps are best for you. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.